All right, so the first thing I want to address here is the fact that, you know, this is something I've mentioned before, but I have a very uh, strong love-hate relationship with the EF chassis. Uh, I've had multiple CRXs and an EF hatch, and I would like to have a wagon one day, and I would also like to have a sedan one day, but uh, there's been plenty of times where I've, I've been like, I'm never, ever swapping an EF again. Uh, why? Because aside from, you know, the new modern, modern chassis, the EF chassis is the most difficult chassis to do big swaps in. Now, I'm not saying it's like, oh my God, fucking crazy hard for all the people who are like, I do it all the time. It, it does bring troubles and dilemmas. And it also brings troubles and dilemmas based on uh, how far you want to push this and to swap. Um, now... If you're, you got a CRX and, you know, CRX is one of those popular chassis, one of those timeless cars, uh, you know, the Honda's made there. So everybody likes swapping those around, but you, you don't realize the difficulty it comes to, you know, putting the bigger engines and the bigger the engine gets, the harder it is. All right. So, um, just starting off with the basic B swap, like, um, you, you have to notch the, the frame to clear the alternator. So the alternator doesn't rub into the car itself. Right. And, um, and also the challenge you have with the the EF uh, and that is that there's like the, the front support that goes across to actually like links the suspension and shit together um, I think that, I think it might be part of the subframe I'm not 100% sure uh, no nah, it's not the subframe I don't, I don't remember what it is off the top of your head but if you're an EF chassis owner you, you know what the hell I'm talking about like uh, if, you, if you're gonna do if you have that there and you're gonna just drop a B series in there it's already a really tight fit you know, for the B series, you've already got to make clearance on uh, the one side for the alternator or whatnot. Now, if you're if you're going to drop a B series in there and you want to do bolt-ons or whatnot, you're going to you're going to put an aftermarket header. Now you have the problem of clearing that that rail, and you have to notch it. You have to cut into it to make space for your, for the header's downpipe, right? Because it's a tight fit even with the stock header on there. So if you go aftermarket, you got to cut. Now, um, a way to get around this is is to go with a uh, traction bar. Traction bar replaces that. It's a whole lot smaller. And, you know, it fits in there. It's uh, simple enough. It's Anybody can take it out. You just go down there. All you got to do is eyeball it. You take out these bolts, take out these bolts, and you put these new, those same bolts back in with a new piece. So it's really simple to do. And then you make your adjustments on the bars on either side. All right? Um, so here's here's why I say I have like a love-hate relationship with the chassis. Because I like it, but like I said, it's, it's difficult to get the bigger engine in there. All right? So, um... If, you, if you're doing that B-Series swap, and then, like, for me, I, I had B-Series on, um, you know, my B-Series eventually became boosted. And uh, because the downpipe was so big or whatnot, and uh, the turbo and stuff that made it take away from the extra space that you have, uh, for one, like, you have to, like, custom custom make uh, brackets to hold the radiator in place because it just won't line up properly. All right? And then, um, and then uh, you know the, my whole issue with the traction bar. Now, to be fair, in my issue, I probably would the I, I did this the wrong way. I like to buy cheap parts at the time. I was kind of in a pinch. I needed something fast. I, I needed to not spend a lot of money, so I bought a cheap a cheap traction bar. And for whatever reason, it just it never properly lined up. All right, to get it to the point where my alignment was correct, uh, the the traction bar would literally come apart. Like I was driving down the street after installing and it literally popped off and sent my wheel like wobble not off the car or anything but you know it was very alarming <laughs> I had to stop right away and uh, screw this shit back together now to secure it to the point where it was tight enough where it wasn't going to do that anymore it pushed my wheels deep back into the wheel well now rubbing wasn't a problem but here it was a nasty problem eventually uh, uh, when time came uh, like for me to swap I was, I was finally done with that car because the alignment issues were just so bad I didn't feel like spending any more money on it. Um, when I went to swap over, it turns out that my differential was shredded. Like, I had pushed the, the wheels back so far that the axles were at a nasty angle and just fucking destroyed my differential. All right, so um, there's that. All right, so you got to be careful that you get the right fucking parts so that way you don't do some stupid shit like that to your car. And then, like, uh, like if you're going to do, like, an H22 swap or something like that, you're talking about really big, taking up a lot of space, so uh, you got to do more notching and cutting into your frame uh, to get it to clear. And I've watched a, I watched a, a, a CRX get an H swap one time back way before I started doing my own shit. And the guy went through you know a mission to get it, you know everything in there properly because it's either 
So you, the easiest way, of course, is to try and make these adjustments to your frame before you drop the engine in. But then you don't know exactly where it's going to be at. It's kind of like eyeballing it and then you put the engine in and hope that it cleared in the right spot. Or you got to try and put it in and then kind of cut around it. It's just a, it's a pain in the ass. Um, so kind of similar to what I was just talking about with the H22 swap in general. You know, uh, for the H versus K. Um, this, uh, if you got a CRX and you want to do a, a, a swap in there, you can still follow the basic fundamentals of the swap. You know, the axles from the, the you know from the swap you're gonna need, the, the the harness from the car. You know, so it's it's basic. All all engine swaps are pretty much basic along that certain route, as long as you're staying within the same family or whatnot, uh, the same generation of stuff. Or, as long as you're not fucking going K or trying to put an LS into it. It's all basic shit. You need the the harness and stuff from the car. And I'm not going to go over that shit again. That's fine. But uh, just guys, you have to understand that I can't give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough and type it out words. And I can't do it in a video like this. The only way I can walk you through a guide for a swap is to actually do the swap. You know, the closest thing I've gotten to it is what I filmed recently pulling that engine out, out of the Integra. And... Um, and you know, and doing my little explanation for what I said for what you need, that is it. It is basic stuff. It is real basic stuff like that. But the, when it comes to EF, though, it's a little bit more like when making clearances and shit. So um, there's a bunch of write-ups out there all over the fucking internet for what you need to to clear what's gonna hit where and all that stuff. Um, if if you're looking into this and you're not feeling comfortable, and this goes for any fucking modification across the board that you're going to do. If you're getting into a point where you're going to make a modification and you're not comfortable and you're looking but you're not, still not feeling comfortable, coming to me isn't going to be the thing that's necessarily going to make you feel better. Because a lot of times I've already talked about it and, you know, and I've been, you know, still getting the repeat questions. Like, today I got a, or a question on my, on my no-notch uh, no -notch fucking uh, review for the Speed Factory's rods. So I don't need to notch these if I put these in, my, you know, like, like, dude, that's what the video is about. That is what it's about. I, I absolutely go crazy when people insist on me saying it again in a comment after I just made a video on it. All right, but that, that's just, you know, in general. You know, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't help you on your engine swaps like this. I can't, I, if I'm without me being there. But at the same time, it is very straightforward and easy. You take the old engine out, you put the new engine in. You go on fucking eBay and you look for, you search in uh, this swap mounts for this car. And it's that simple. The only time you need to remove engine mount brackets is for a K swap. If you're not doing a K swap, then everything is pretty much just bolt in, plug and play. Now, for an age swap, if you're going to do a full age swap, that's a little bit different. The mount kit comes easy enough, uh, but you're, you're going to have to cut into your fucking where your shifter goes to put in for those cables. If you're, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to try and walk you through an age swap on here because I just can't do it without actually going and doing one. And uh, so, if you're if you're looking for uh, for H22 stuff and you can't find it, anything on the internet to make you feel any more comfortable about it, I'm sorry, I can't help you out here. This is not going to happen. The only thing I can tell you is that, for, like I said, for anything across the board that you're not feeling comfortable with, then do not do it. If you're not willing to make the attempt yourself to do it, give it to a professional. Give it to somebody who knows what they're doing. You know, there's a lot of guys all the time that, you know, tiptoe around like, oh, I'm scared to do this. I'm scared of this. You cannot be, you cannot be scared to make mistakes. You cannot do this. You, yeah, I understand, you know, have that little nervous jitter. That's, you know, make the decision. Like, if you're going to, jump out of an airplane, you know, do skydiving, you know, you're, you're willing to do it and you're going to jump, but it's, ner it's natural to still feel nervous jitters. But if you're still, if you're so scared up to the point where you're like, I, just, I don't know if I should do this, then you probably shouldn't. And the same thing with modifying your car. Like, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Give it to somebody who knows. Give it to somebody who's going to be comfortable doing the swap. They're going to be doing the job. Whatever it is, the job that is you're going to do to modify. If you are not feeling comfortable, give it to somebody else because there's a good chance you're going to make a mistake. And if, especially if it's your only car that you have. And uh, honestly, you know, I know that we do it all the time and people are always going to do it. But I never recommend, you know, using your car as a guinea pig, especially if it's sometime, something the first time you're doing. You know, Hondas aren't very expensive. If you got a place where you can park a car without anybody bothering you, buy a fucking shell for a couple hundred bucks, buy some stuff, play with it, put it together and figure it out. The best way to learn anything is to do it. You can read a million write-ups, you can read a million instructions, you can ask me a million questions. The best way to learn is actually make the attempt to do something yourself. But um, this was this video is supposed to focus mainly on the EF chassis, and I, and I am warning you guys that the EF is a little bit, you know, a little more difficult just because 
the bay constrictions. You know, personally, I've told myself that if I go to do another EF again, I'm just going to put a Vitara single cam in there because it's made for the single cam. It's got plenty of room for that, and there's not a whole bunch of crazy shit you have to do to make that work. If you got an older chassis that you want to do like a B swap with, then you do a D8. Unless you're feeling comfortable to tackle the CRX or the, or the EF hatch. It's not impossible to do. It's not super difficult. It's just more difficult than the other chassis. I hope this helps. I really do. I really hope this helps uh, clear up some things here. But um, yeah, I just, I can't. I, I, there's not really much I can do for swaps, guys. I mean, you really, it really is a pretty, a pretty direct thing. And I've already covered enough. This is going to be the last time I talk about engine swaps. Or from, from from this point forward, anybody asked if my engine swap help is just going to get, um, I'm just going to give them a list of those videos, these discussions videos I'm making. Because unless I go out there and do a step-by-step -step fucking swap video, you know, it's just it's not going to really be much help, help to you. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry if this upsets you or if you can't get anything out of it, but just just the way it is, guys. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Thanks for watching, and peace.